In this video, I'm going to reveal to you when I think Jesus was born. And it wasn't December the 25th. But I'm also going to reveal to you why I think we should definitely celebrate December the 25th. Now, you can actually work out when Jesus was born. First thing you've got to do is to work out the year he was born. And I'll just tell you it was 2 BC. I'm not going to go into the great detail of why that was because it'll take forever. So, assuming 2 BC is the year he was born, we can then work out the date. And the way we work this out is based on John the Baptist. We know that Jesus was born six months after John the Baptist. And we know when John the Baptist was born, so we can work out when Jesus was born. Now you say, Paul, how can we work out when John the Baptist was born? Well, Elizabeth conceived while Zachariah, John's dad, was serving in the temple. And he only had a two-week stint in the temple because he was from the division of Abijah. So and we've got records that keep when uh, Abijah's div division was actually working in the temple. So you can trace from that when John the Baptist was born, which is around March time. Six months after that, Jesus was born, which would have made it late September, early October. Now, because there are a lot of significant days in Jesus' life that coincide with Jewish feast days, you know, like his, his death, at Passover and his resurrection at the Feast of First Fruits, it stands to reason that perhaps his birth was also on a particular Jewish feast day. So that leaves us two left over, because you've had Pentecost as well when the Holy Spirit came. So we've got the Feast of Trumpets, which is when a lot of people think that Jesus is going to come again when the trumpet call is raised. And uh, there's the Feast of Tabernacles. So I believe it's the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Feast of Tabernacles on that year was on October the 10th. So now if I'm wrong and it's the Feast of Trumpets, then that would make a 29th of September birthday. But it's probably the 10th of October, 10th of the 10th, back in 2 BC, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So maybe we should all switch to celebrating then. Good luck with that. But um, why is it still important, do you think, to celebrate it on December 25th. I'll tell you why. Well, if you work it out, then Jesus was actually conceived of the Holy Spirit around Christmas time, around late December, which is brilliant. And that is the best thing of all, because we're talking about God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man, which is amazing, isn't it? To think that God Almighty should be able to become tiny inside the Virgin Mary. It's wonderful, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful. And that's one of the greatest miracles of all. And that's definitely something worth celebrating at Christmas time. But you know, some may say, well, what was the whole point of him coming? Why did he take on flesh? Why did he become human? Well, the reason for that is because as the immortal son of God in heaven, there's one thing he could not do, and that is die. So he came down to this earth to die for you and for me. Now I know he came and dwelt amongst us. That's why I think it's the Feast of Tabernacles. That word, he tabernacled amongst us. He made his temporary dwelling among us, just like a tent, a tabernacle is a temporary dwelling that the Jews used to uh, live in during the Feast of Tabernacles. He lived amongst us. He, he came amongst us, but he drew alongside uh, humans at other times in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord. And sometimes there's some misconception as to whether the, it's the angel of the Lord or whether he's actually uh, God himself, the son of God himself. And uh, one way you know that is if the people who bow down and worship the angel are not told to get up, then you know it's God. You know it's Jesus. You know it's a pre-incarnate manifestation of the Lord Jesus Christ. But if they are told to get up, then it's just an angel. And these are called theophanies, and they happen throughout the Old Testament. So he came amongst us and did miracles. But to become human, to die for us, he had to do what he did 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem that we celebrate around Christmas time. He had to be made flesh. And you know, the other thing that's so amazing about that is 
he's still got that humanity. We saw him in his resurrected appearances. He's still got the humanity. He's still got the marks in his hands and his side, those marks which was woundings for us. And this is the beautiful thing. It means that we have an advocate on high before God the Father. A human advocate stood in God the Father's presence, interceding for us on a daily basis. He knows our weaknesses because he took them on board. He knows our frailties because he became frail flesh like us. He knows our humanity because he now is human. We have a representative who understands all our weaknesses and we can bring everything to God the Father in prayer through God the Son.